Hi guys, Squall here and welcome to How to Nail Your Landings on Xbox Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now if you're new to flying in general or just new to Microsoft Flight Simulator or just struggling to make landings that you can walk away from, well this video might just be for you. We'll be using an Xbox controller for this and I assume that you've watched my previous video, the Getting Started video, because in that video we set up controller sensitivities and also some of the settings that you need to make sure that your sim uh, is running well for tutorial purposes. If not, go and check out that video first. Now the goal here is to give you a basic understanding of how to land an aircraft. Most people can take off all right, but landing requires a bit more skill. However, since we've got crash damage turned off, never be afraid of trying. It's a skill that you're learning, so you need to practice, practice, practice. You also need a bit of patience. Now, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Before we take a look at how to nail a landing, I thought it might be useful first to just show you a few common mistakes that pilots make when they come in to land. So let's take a look at those. So the first common mistake that you see people new to this trying to do is they come in too high and too fast. So what tends to happen is they've been flying around and they see the airport they want to land at, so what they do is they just start pointing the aircraft straight at the runway, thinking this is going to work. What's actually happening here is you're gaining too much speed. As you come down from a higher altitude, you pick up speed. Look at the airspeed on the left, though. It's almost in the yellow, which is kind of semi-warning territory. So they start pointing down at the runway. Inevitably, hopefully, sort of back off on the throttle a little bit. So let's say we kill the throttle now, pointing straight at the start of the runway. And what's happening is we're not losing any speed. We're too high, too fast. The altitude's coming down, we're pointing straight at the threshold of the runway, but we have way too much speed. This is not going to end well because I'm going to have to get rid of all this speed before I can even land. So that is too high and too fast. So the next common problem is exactly the opposite, too low and too slow. Having been burnt from the first attempt, you then come in, back off on the throttle here, and think to yourself, right, I'm not going to overshoot this runway. The issue now is that the profile of the runway is too flat. We can't really see what's going on. But what we're actually doing is just aiming for the threshold of the runway. We're not going too quickly now. Our altitude's coming down nicely. However, what tends to happen now is you lose focus on the important stuff. And by that, I mean the airspeed. So look what's happening on the left. Our airspeed is coming down. We're slowing down nicely. Our altitude's coming down nicely. But now we're not going to make it. So the tendency now is to sort of pull the nose up to try and get more height. And very shortly, disaster's going to strike because as we pull the nose up, we stall. We don't have, don't have enough airspeed to fly anymore. And yeah, the inevitable happens. That is more dangerous than being too high and too fast. Last example I'm going to show you of what can go wrong is having got the approach correct, coming in at a decent speed, got everything under control, they get the flare wrong. The flare is the bit where you sort of need to touch down on the main wheels at the back. So you get near the runway, you kill the power, and you start to do this yo-yo thing where you know you don't want to land on the front wheel, you need to land on the back wheel, and so you overcompensate and slam it into the ground. That is surprisingly common. I'll show you how to fix that as well. So what is the secret to a good landing? What's the trick here? There's a few things we need to learn. But the secret to a good landing begins with a good approach. If you don't have a good approach, if you don't set the plane up properly on the approach, you won't have a good landing. Now, there are one, well, there is one thing that we need to fix here, and that's the weather. The last thing you want to be doing when you are practicing landings is dealing with weather, dealing with wind in particular. So the first thing you want to do is click in the left stick, move up to this cloud symbol here, that's the weather, and have a look at what your weather is set to. I would suggest that you change this to clear skies, so you've got absolutely no cloud cover, and then come down here, click on the wind layer, if you've got more than one wind layer, then just delete it. Like that, get rid of all the wind layers. So now you've got no clouds, no wind layers, and you've got no weather affecting what you're doing. Click on the left stick again just to get rid of that menu. Now we can focus on just us, just the plane, just the act of landing. Wind will just make it more complex and you don't want that at this point. 
Okay, so what I've done here is I've just flown quite a way away from the runway, just so that we can talk about a couple of things. I don't want to complicate this, but there's a couple of things that we do need to understand. The first one is trim. Now, trim is actually shown down the bottom bar on the right next to flaps. Flaps and trim. We're going to discuss both of those things since they're both important for landing. Let's start with trip. What is trip? Right now, I'm flying along and I'm keeping about 2,000 feet altitude as shown on the dial on the right bar. However, you may notice that I'm bobbing along because what's happening is if I let go of my stick, the aircraft starts to go into a bit of a dive, so I have to pull back on the stick to stop it from going into that dive. Now that's a bit of a work on the pilot because you have to constantly pull back on the stick, constantly readjust the plane. The reason for this is your trim is wrong. Trim is something that you can do that will, if you like, affect where the neutral position is of your yoke. Think of it that way. So right now what we want is we want the neutral stick when we let go to be back a little bit from where it is. And the way that we adjust trim on the controller is you press the right bumper key and when you've got the right bumper key on your controller held in, you move up and down with the right stick. Now I'm going to do that now and I want you to keep your eye on that trim down the bottom. Watch that little needle. So I'm holding the right bumper and I'm pulling back and you see the needle come down. I only adjusted it a little bit and now look, the plane is in a climb. So I'm going to hold right bumper and I'm going to nudge it forward a touch. Very, very small changes will make big differences to what the aircraft does. So again, I'm just pulling back with the right bumper down, just pulling back slightly. Let it settle. You've got to give it a chance to settle down. But notice what's happening now. I am not touching the controller. And the aircraft, although the V-speed is going up and down a little bit, the aircraft is actually starting to settle out around about 2,000. You'll see it'll kind of go up and down slowly. But I'm no longer having to fight the stick. Now, trim is extremely important when we come into land because when we're coming in on a nice glide coming down to the runway what we don't want is to be fighting with the stick we want to trim the aircraft nicely so that it does exactly what we want to do and that puts less effort for us now we'll talk about flaps you can see the flaps they're in the middle of the wing the big wing at the top they're actually in the middle there you can see the ailerons on the edges there but the big things in the middle are the flaps the flaps are useful when we're coming into land and also during takeoff as well if we need it. They basically allow us the wing to generate more lift at a slower speed. They do increase drag though, which is why we always get rid of them when we're flying because we want maximum speed. But when we're coming into land, we can put the flaps down and it will allow us to land at a lower speed. That's important because when we want to land, we will ultimately want to get rid of all the speed. So if we can do it at a lower speed, all the better. So flaps are something that you can deploy with the D-pad, up and down on the D-pad. However, there is one thing to note. On the airspeed indicator, you see that green section there. That's where the aircraft is best flown, if you like. It's highly maneuverable in the green section. In the yellow section is where you're kind of going so quick, you have to be a bit careful, but don't worry about that. What I want you to look at is the white arc that runs around the edge and stops at about, what, 85 knots, something like that? In order to use flaps, you need to be inside that white arc. Now, as it happens, we've got all the damage turned off, so I could deploy the flaps, which I will do now. As you can see, the flaps are down, the aircraft's lifting up because it has more lift, and the aircraft's not affected by this because we've got all the damage turned off. However, on a real aircraft, if you put the, the flaps down when you're going too quickly, you can damage the plane. So what we want to do is aim to get that speed down into the white arc before we put those flaps down. That is all the technical stuff you really need to know for now. Trim and flaps. Trim helps you to get your neutral position right on your stick, up and down that is, or elevation as it's called. And flaps are used to basically give us more lift at a lower speed. So with those two things together, let's get ourselves set up, come in for approach, and we'll talk about some final bits and pieces. Every aircraft behaves differently. And what I mean by that is, the speed that you take off, the speed that it's designed to cruise at, and the speed that you land is different for every aircraft, as are the flaps you use and the speeds that you use when you have flaps deployed. This is a Cessna 152, and if you want to follow the landing in this tutorial, you really need to use a Cessna 152. Get your landing snail, and then later on, move to different aircraft. Now with this one, what we need to do 
really is get our speed down to about 80 knots. We're quite away from the airfield, but now is a good time to get our speed under control. The way we're going to do that is we're going to back off on the power, and what's going to happen is the aircraft will tend to want to dive down. So then we need to pull back on the stick. So we need to hold our altitude at about 2,000 feet. Don't worry if you give or take a few hundred. Just around about 2,000 will do. We're going to back our power back to about 1,000 RPM. So look at the engine needle there. I'm going to put that needle on 10, which is 1,000 RPM. And I'm going to pull back on the stick here and re-trim. So I'm going to press the right bumper, pull back on the right stick just to pull some trim back, which is like changing our neutral position on our yoke. So we're pulling back a bit more by default. You need to play around with that. Just get your trim set so that uh, you get around about 2,000 feet there and your speed should level off around about 80 as you go into a very, very gentle sort of decline. We're starting to go down now. There you go. Now, once you've got yourself trimmed and you look reasonably stable, the speed is within 85 knots, so within white arc. So now we're going to deploy flaps. So press down on the D-pad. If you look at the flap symbol now, it says that we've deployed the first stage of flaps. You now need to push the nose down just a little bit and retrim so that you're now going to go into a very gentle descent. You're aiming to be about 80 knots, something like that. We've got a long way to go to the airfield. We've got plenty of time. Things start to happen a bit quickly. And when you're learning, you're looking at so many different things. So give yourself space to the runway. What we're looking to do is get our speed somewhere around about 75, 80. Don't worry about things too much but with one stage of flaps. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the second stage of flaps and try and get our speed around about 70 knots. So let's do that now. So with another stage of flaps down on the D-pad, push the nose down. You should start to go into a, a sort of a gentle descent now. And you're looking to re-trim so that you're, you're going at about 70-ish knots. If you're too high, if your speed is too fast, you wanna come back with a lift the nose up to slow down push the nose forward to speed up. So that's what you're aiming to do. And the trim is just effectively changing the neutral position of your stick. So instead of having to pull back or push forward, it's just changing it so it's doing it by default. Now this is what you call a stable approach. We're doing 70 knots, second stage of flaps, you've got a good distance to the runway, things are gonna start happening quickly now. What I suggest when you're learning is get the third stage of flaps in nice and early now. Normally you would leave it a little bit longer, but get the third stage in, and let's push the nose down and we're looking now to get about 60 knots now once you've got yourself trimmed out and by that i mean you're not touching the stick i'm not touching the stick now we're doing about 70 knots it's a bit too quick so now i'm going to back off on the throttle a little bit so notice the engine rpms are coming down make a small change wait about 10 seconds and see what the effect is because these changes take a little bit of time to kick in so too much speed, I'm going to pull back on the stick. I'm going to re-trim back slightly. So the nose comes up, the speed comes down. And we just wait a few seconds to see what happens. Now, if we start to lose too much speed, you can either put the nose down or add a bit more throttle. That depends on where you are with your aircraft now. As I'm looking at this, I don't want to add more throttle really. What I want to do is just sort of pitch the nose up and down. So I'm going to pitch the nose down a little bit and reduce the throttle because I'm going to come in too quick otherwise. If you push down on the stick, you're going to pick speed up because you're going downhill if you like. Then you need to reduce the throttle if you don't want to go any faster. Think of it that way. So it really is a play between the pitch and your throttle. But the goal here is to get about 60 knots on a final approach like that. You need to turn just to keep yourself lined up with the runway. Do not pull the stick back at this point. If you need more speed, just add a bit more throttle. You want to change the throttle to give you more speed. And it will also give you more altitude, but 60 knots as we're coming in, we're nicely trimmed. Now as we get over the threshold, what we're going to do is going to reduce the power down to zero and then let the plane glide. Don't let it land. And that sounds a bit crazy considering it coming into land, but now we're over the threshold, I'm going to reduce the power. Gently pull back on the stick so that it doesn't land. The speed's going to bleed off. Keep the stick back. Don't let the plane get too high or too low. Just pull back. We want to land on the mains. The plane will fall out the sky on its own. There you go. So what happened then in the last few seconds? We removed all the power. That meant that the plane is no longer pushing forward through the air. And inevitably, as the airspeed comes down, the lift on the wing 
reduces and the plane just gently falls out the sky. It can't fly anymore because you're not powered through the wind. So what you're, you're looking to do on that flare is just pull back on the stick, wait for the plane to fall out the sky is what you're doing. If you pull back too much, you'll do the yo-yo thing. It's just a matter of gently pulling back, let go if you need to, but gently just, just hold the plane off and it will come out the sky on its own. And that's what you're looking for. That little beep you heard, that was the stall warning. That was the wing saying, hey, I can't generate lift anymore. We're about to fall out the sky. Well, that's great because that's what we want to do at that point. We're trying to land. If you're in midair and that happens, well, you need to push the nose down and pick up some speed quickly. Um, but when you're trying to land, that's the, the noise you want to hear. There's music to your ears. The wind is no longer going over the wing. It can't generate lift. It's about to land. Now, there are obviously there's more to it than this when, it, when you're talking about landing a plane. And different aircraft, as I said before, behave in different ways. But try it with a 172. Do what I said. Clear the skies. Remove all the wind. Give yourself plenty of time. Focus on your airspeed and focus on trim. Trim the aircraft so that it's flying itself. It's in a nice, stable approach. That's what you're looking for. 80 knots will do initially with flaps one, 70 knots with flaps two. When you're in flaps three, you want about 60 knots. 60 knots is a good approach speed. As you're coming in on final to land, if you need a little bit more speed, you can either put the nose down or add a bit of throttle. And if you need to slow down, you can either pull the throttle back or pull the stick back depending on you know how much runway you have left to go when you get over the threshold kill the throttle completely and just hold the plane in a glide and let it fall out the sky gently that's what you're looking to do normally pilots have checklists for all kinds of things make sure your parking brake is turned off before you come into land that's left on the d-pad if you've accidentally knocked it or something you can jump in the cockpit just check that lever uh, just underneath the yoke there is, is pushed in because uh, obviously if I press left on the d-pad now parking brake comes out and the plane will stop if you try to land with the parking brake on you're going to find yourself very very abruptly stopping and possibly damaging the aircraft that is it for this video I am confident that you can do this you just need to give it a go focus on what I said watch the video a few times if you need to but give it a go until you nail your landings and then this sim will be so much more enjoyable once you've nailed your landings on the Cessna 152 move on to other aircraft Try the Cessna 172, it lands in a very, very similar way. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to share it with uh, your friends or anybody you think might uh, want to try taking off and landing. Don't forget the Getting Started video showed you how to get going in, in Xbox Microsoft Flight Sim, and this one has been all about landing. There are many tutorials on my channel, so don't forget to sub for more content. Take care, guys. Happy flying.